Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ami Politai Funk with Breathing Room. I got space. It's all me. I'm going to take you through these final games between Barton PL and Helping Hands. The first game was awesome, epic. It was COH2 at its finest. Uh, saw an excellent fight in game one. Big shout out to the players for providing us with that good stuff. And of course, an even bigger shout out to Peter Kumsia who was my special guest caster, a balance designer at Relic Entertainment, straight from Vancouver on a Sunday morning. He's now probably enjoying some waffles and eggs or something. Uh, I'm getting hungry, man. Let me see, it's, uh, yeah, what else is there to talk about? These guys are playing for the final spot. Let me just show you once again our brackets. Um, this is the Sunday Night Fights season five brackets overview. Thanks to Alienware and Sega and Relic for sponsoring this event. We've got over $5,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. And we're about to find out um, in two weeks time, who will be the fourth semifinalist to join Andy is Rippin, Von Ivan and OMG Pop in the semis. And if we zoom in on today's uh, tournament, you can see already that Barton had to overcome Paradox and Helping Hands had to overcome the guy with the always rotating name, uh, Love, Glory, Peace, otherwise known as Creedence Clearwater Revival. No, sorry. Uh, that's a feel, memory, acceptance, I believe. Um, two to one. That was a tight series. Uh, those replays are available on code2.org and our replay sections. You can check them out later. I'm sure that other casters will be uh, hooking you guys up with some great shoutcasts of those. Um, you can see in the bottom bracket, we had our, our warm-up games for the day. We had Cruz. Uh, losing to Jeslin 0-2. to two. So Jeslin awaits the winner of this, and they will play in two weeks' time on December 9th in our contender bout number four. So we still have a Company of Heroes 2 game to give away. If you hit follow on the Twitch channel, that will make you eligible for it. We will give it away uh, perhaps after this game if Hands can close it out or after the ace game if Barton wins and takes it to a third game. Why don't we hop right in? I'm paused at five seconds. Co-caster, we can unpause in. Okay, I'm, I'm running that joke to death. All right, I actually have to t I have to actually go in game. That would help. Here we go. All right, fix the overlays. Don't want to make you suffer through. Oh, man, I messed up on game two. I had those overlays all botched. But here we are. Um, let's see if we got the colors here. I'm still following Barton. He's going to be playing the Soviets in the blue trunks. We got helping hands. Moving over to what um, we could easily say is his favorite faction. Uh, Hans uh, loves playing Oster, so let's see what he will show us as he is behind the wheel of his favorite faction. I'm about to get this thing rolling. Thanks to Stefenfu for this awesome fight music. This is a special SNF composition that Stefenfu has made just for us. Um, we'll make that available in the music thread sooner or later. Um, remind me to do that. All right, thanks to the Fenfu. We're going to get into this. We're at five seconds. Here we go. Got helping hands. Got the resources here shown. This is Hansy on top. Uh, he's the red player playing the Ost there. And, of course, Barton uh, is the lower on. resource bar. And he is playing the Soviets. And he's got two conscripts coming out. 
we can hop over to Hansy real quick and see what his build is. Two Grenadiers, nothing, nothing different there. Uh, Peter had an interesting suggestion of going Pioneer first. Um, he was mentioning that it's uh, more manpower efficient, and he likes having two Pioneers right at the start. So we'll see if uh, what, what top players think of that idea. Let me just check the chat real quick. Make sure everything, you guys hear me okay? That's the important thing. As long as you can hear me, we're good to go. All right, my voice is also getting a workout. I have done my share of shouting today already. Uh, the first game between Jeslin and Cruz was a real bloody slugfest. I was shouting during that one, and I was shouting my lungs out during game one between Barton and Hansey. As we saw Panther versus Panther, we saw Broom Bear, we saw Triple Vet, Zis, AT Gun. That was a nice game. We saw Mines, we saw uh, Reinforced Tactics, we saw Harassment, we saw our share of Nades, and Death, and Nade, nade Dodges. That's easier now with the reduced input lag. All right, so it's straight Grenadiers from Hansi. Uh, we freaked Hansi going uh, tier 2 with the Sundercraft Fartzoic support. Um, it kind of varies whether he puts flames on it or not, depending on how he's doing. Uh, I'm sure you all know him from his stream. He is a very popular streamer. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, that he continues to stream. Um, okay, these guys are just taking the map a bit. I can show you the, the tactical map quickly, and you can see the Hans' third unit is an MG, and Hans is pushing all around to the north, so that's interesting. So first engagement is happening. Conscripts are going to vault that wooden fence and try to garrison this house. Hans knows that he's beaten to the spot, so he's going to vault himself, try to link up with his other Grens, and they are going to hang out in yellow cover and wait for the support of the MG42 to arrive. Interesting that Hansy is uh, going so hard for the north. Okay, Barton has unlocked Molotovs. He uh, doesn't like this engagement. He sacrificed the house, didn't want to stay in it, didn't want to fight all these guys, even from the, the strong cover of the house. He just wants to sort of move up here and maybe fight off these pioneers who are trying to cap. Barton, of course, is doing a wonderful job on the south of the map, capping all over the place. He's moving to the center now, um, and it looks like these guys will probably go out to the right ammo. But we're missing a fight up here. These conscripts found a target that they can handle. They're going to do as much damage to these engineers as they can before the rest of the army arrives, and now it's time to leave. Pro play from both Barton and Hans, my friends. You are witnessing CO2 at its best. This is what we like to see. One of our season taglines was the best of the best. I think that was um, season three. And then, of course, season four was the victory lap for, for COH1. And now season five, we're rocking... Um, not one step back. Fresh have arrived. Okay, Barton's got to be careful. Hans is going to push hard for this cutoff. So now his plan is revealed. Bring all of his army around the north, cap up all those resources, and then push in here for this point, which will cut off much of the center. There, the cutoff is successful. So all he's really doing is cutting off these two strap points because Barton is still connected around to the right. But we know that there's ammo and fuel coming in from those strap points. And now Hansi, it looks like, um, is going to try to defend against Barton, who has garrisoned many of the strong houses in the center. His conscripts want to recap the strap point, but not while an MG is shooting at them. Oh, he, he gives up the garrison of the church to try and flank this MG-42. He does have Molotovs. Here it comes. Oh, the first hit does a lot of damage. One of the one of the members of the squad dies, but look at Hansi with tons of grins there to support. Another flanking conscript squad. Now that the MG is forced to reset up, everybody's got to move. He's trying to put another flank on. Let's see where this MG is pointing. Will they be able to get out of the cone of fire? No, they won't. They're suppressed. They can still throw the Molotov. And then they're going to run. Hansi's going to unpack and reposition. He's taking a lot of flame damage. That MG is very hurt. And these two conscript squads of Bartons are looking strong. There's an errant nade. The squad was already out of that range, so not a, not a good place to fire a nade from hands. And this MG's got a lot of work to do. He's pointing in the right direction, but there's conscripts everywhere. One of them's going to sit in the house for LOS. That's a smart move. And the other's going to move off and either try to cap or flank. OK, 
Okay, Barton need something continuing to cap along the right, and he's going to put a sneaky set of mines outside of Hansi's base. There's a nice surprise waiting. We've seen mines put there so many times in vanilla Company of Heroes as people try to go for the Semwa pin, as it was called. We see a little less of the Samoski pin, but those should be a nasty surprise for any Ulster troops trying to leave via that land bridge. Uh oh, they're caught up a bit on the retreat. Come on, guys, keep running. All right. Barton has unlocked um, 18 nades in advance of what might be coming out of tier two. We don't know yet. Let's see. Let's hop over to Hansi real quick and check it out. Yes, the Sonderkraft Fartzeug is on the way, and Barton is prepared. But can 18 nades ever really handle the, the Sonderkraft Fartzeug? It all depends on how it is used and how it is supported by Grens whether or not it upgrades to those very strong um, oil spitting flammenwerfers. Uh oh, this is tough. This squad is just not healthy enough. Even though he's got eyes on this conscript squad. Let's see, is it gonna succeed? No, he's down to one man. And they're still moving as he had to reman the gun. They were able to get the flank off and yes, Hans is gonna have to retreat that. It's gonna be a tough retreat. They're gonna have to go through fire. Let's see if he's able to annihilate that squad. Long range shot. Can he get the last shot in? No, Hans gets a break. Those Grens were there to just try to provide a buffer for that retreat. Hans catching a break, getting that MG away. Check out Barton taking a, taking a pip of Vet, one, one gold star for this conscript squad. Ooh, an 18 8 in already. I totally missed it. Um, perhaps Hans didn't expect that Barton would have already tech nades. But, so he's got that engine crit, he's gonna have to back out of the fight, and you know, he can support it with Grant, but he really needs to get some pioneers up there to repair, and uh, he doesn't really have any on the way. Where are his pyos? Here they are, retreating. I guess he's only got that one pyo squad, let's check real quick. Yep, just one. So they're gonna have to hot tail it out to support this position. Let's see, Barton's bringing guards in. So he's unlocked this um, <laughs> guard rifle combined arms tactics, which has hit the dirt and PPSH. This is a great mid-game um, company, I feel, or commander. But uh, you know, we don't often see players afford and put up this howitzer. So I think that the this commander is the strongest during the mid-game when the PPSH hits. You know, they're so cheap; they're only 10 ammo but gets a little weaker as the game progresses as it doesn't really have any kind of like shock tank that comes in at the end of the tree. But this is a good time to use that Doctrine. Barton's uh, map, map, map control is fantastic. So if he can retain this map control with his PPSHs, he's, he's looking good. But uh, he'll probably have to tech to tier three to bring out either T70s or T34s so that he's got some kind of punch. Ooh, that's a tough loss. Those conscripts go down. The guards weren't quite there in time to save them. A very nice kill by Hansi and his um, Panzer Grenadiers. Look at Barton. Uh, someone, someone ate this mine already. I missed it entirely. Might have been those, might have been those pioneers that we saw retreating earlier. Now Barton's trying to wire it up. Hans has got a big force. He has upgraded the Flammenwerfer and he has prepared. So that is exactly what he needs to counter units and houses. Barton sees it, hops out quick. These guys are trying to figure out where and how they should engage each other. I'm gonna turn the Fog of War back on. Look at that, that's really interesting. Barton does not see a single one of Hansi's units at the moment. Now he starts to see them all at once. That's the thing, when guys use their armies well, the entire army pops out of the Fog of War at once. Look at that, look at it. Now suddenly we can see them all. This, uh, this two-story church provides a really long line of sight. They put the Fog of War back off again as they fight. Barton microing away from the green cover to dodge that nade. These Panzer Grenadiers are pushing. There's a lot of PPSH conscripts there to deal with. This squad's gonna have a tough retreat if Hans focuses it down and he does, then gets his own retreat to save these Panzer Grenadiers, and now the Flammenwerf is gonna see what he can do. Nice hard point with all the friends. They're gonna probably be reinforcing as they fight. That, that Molotov completely missed it. Uh, 
And now Barton looks like he's trying to push forward. And although he might not be getting kills and necessarily winning the skirmish, he's definitely holding his map control and putting um, hands kind of on the back foot as he has to micro his army. More conscripts coming around. These guys don't have PPSH. And suddenly the Flammenberg gets to cook something. Ouch. They found an MG. Oh! Whoa! 18 is in. Flammenberg for down. How did they do it? It must have been a couple guard shots as well as that 18 nade. I was totally cloaked by the tree. I didn't see anything. I hope you guys did. All I saw was a pretty high health Sondekraft Fartzoig go up in flames all of a sudden. Great kill by Barton. Squad standing by. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. Man down! Okay, he got that kill, and then it looks like he's going to back off a bit, kind of lick his wounds. It's going to give Hans the opportunity to move into the center. He's leading with minesweepers. Very nice tactics to learn from. Of course, he doesn't have a vehicle to come behind them, but you also want to sweep mines for your infantry. Fresh meat has arrived. Barton's hopping in the church, building the tank of a battalion. We expect a tier three from him. He is at 135 fuel, so you know, he can choose to wait for T-34 first or go T-70s. I think at this stage in the game, it will Enemy probably fire! be T-34, although I'm not sure. Hans has got a pack coming out. Barton is teching, so he's got to kind of chill out and give a little bit of map away while he techs. He doesn't want to lose manpower and getting into fights that he can't handle. Um, Hans has rebuilt the SDKFC. More PPSH upgraded for Barton. Um, he's got four of these conscript squads. He's having to um, finally finish building tier three. And as you can see, anything is available. Let's see what he chooses. Surely it will be a T-34. He's trying to harass a bit. Uh, Barton's always very good with his troop, troop movements. He's always got guys harassing corners of the map. These guys are going to put up some sandbags so they could perhaps defend that point a little longer. And yeah, Barton's looking pretty comfortable. Um, what are we going to see from Hansi? You know, he's like, he's really counting on this pack to do a ton of work. He's sticking to his original game plan, which was to control the northern part of the map. You can tell that, you know, the pack's slower than all the units, so it had to get a head start on everybody else. But you can tell his entire force is going to be moving up around to the north to support that pack. And, you know, that's all he's got to deal with the T-34. And we'll see if that's enough. I'm curious to see if he'll upgrade Shrek's. Um, hands is a little low on ammo. Standing by. He can't afford them right now. Okay, they're going to see each other. These conscripts are waiting. we go back to following Barton. And although they have green cover there, they like they, they prefer the stuff behind the, the hay barrel. The, he hears the pack and as it's firing away. Um, Relic, if you're watching, can we have hold fire, please, <laughs> on these various the units? Like every supplies. unit, like all units should have hold fire in this game. That adds, uh, that, ho that makes a higher skill cap. You know, people can use... They can fire and reveal units. Uh, they have more control of when their units are revealed. So we really want hold fire on absolutely everything, particularly on, on snow maps. Not that we see many on SNF, but it's even more important um, on winter maps. OK, hands pushing forward, suffering a uh, guard's nade against that MG. Pack is trying to get into position. The guards are working on it now. Uh oh, Barton being very aggressive. Oh, no, I thought he might try to go for a flank, but he's going to back away. Just going to use that T-34 to defend against these forward Grenadiers. They have to retreat. And you can see that Hansi's army is uh, being whittled down, although here comes the strong portion of his infantry. They are pushing towards the middle. The guards don't like it. They're trying to back away. They're getting into green cover. These conscripts are pushing in. If they hop in this house, they're going to get a wonderful line of sight. Uh, just show quickly the fog of war. Nope, they don't even go for it. Too much heat. They're just going to retreat. Probably a, probably a wise move. Um, Barton kind of tactically falling back into the center. He realizes that Hans has got a strong combined forces army here. And, you know, 
maybe Barton should consider saving up for a howitzer to sort of break these um, clumped up positions. I mean, look how Hands clumps all of his units together. Wouldn't a couple Howie shots do, uh, you know, like a world of damage against all those units? He could use it to pick out the pack positions in particular, probably get some lucky shots in on the STKFC. That's always reinforcing infantry. But Martin has selected for a second T-34. That gives him a buffer. That's going to be quite nice. Let's see here what he would have to spend to get a howitzer. Where are the, where are the, where's the stats? How much does it cost? I can't see it. Okay, that's weird. Maybe that has something to do with the resources being on for both players. I'll have to fiddle with that. Um, guards are pushing very far forward. Oh man, guards. Okay, well they know where the pack is, but man, they took, they took tons of damage finding out. And very good protecting the front line with his Prancer Grenadiers. They're double bet now. They're very strong. They're chewing up these conscripts. As Hans moves his, uh, sorry, Barton moves his T-34s to the west. He wants to control that VP for as long as possible. Remember, VPs are an issue, and you know Barton is Soviet's 495. What did we find out that Hans went down to? It's like, like 290 or something, like 219 even maybe. I don't. He was in the 200s. So Barton, a massive VP lead. If he can carry this lead out, he will have choice in the third game. Oh, interesting. An ability popped by Hansy. Oh no, it's the arrival of the command tank giving uh, defensive bonuses to all of the infantry in that sector. You can see it light up green quickly on the tactical map. This is a unit that um, that Peter Kumsia mentioned in our previous casts, how strong it can be. As you can see, when he backs into the territory, all of the units get bonuses. Isn't that lovely? And the territory goes dark green. You can see on the mini map as Barton is preparing for an attack, though. We better go back to following Barton. He's moving all his infantry out. These two tanks are chilling over here. Ooh, we have some shreked up Panzer Grenadiers wandering off to the west. Hansi really does need a VP. And all right, he's trying to fall back just a bit. But these guys are very far forward and they're engaging these two tanks. The tanks are focusing the shreks. They need to get those down first. I didn't quite see if a Faust went in. If it did, it didn't get a crit. Barton pushing forward with his infantry. He's definitely going for this attack. He's capped that point. But he's taking lots of damage. He got a great nade in. They're down to one man, but they'll start reinforcing quickly. And yeah, Barton's suffering some huge manpower hits when he pushes those infantry forward. He is continuing to drain hands, though. So, you know, once again, the Soviets just throwing waves of infantry at the German position, taking a lot of casualties, but trying to maintain map control. Now Barton, he's got his third T-34 out, but he's going to give up the left. These guys are going to have to make a soft retreat. He wants to go repair, and they might not be able to. Let's see. Okay, Hans getting a little too far forward. He doesn't want to engage three T-34s with a, the command tank, but the Shrex are coming, and they lay in a big round. Another round across. I love the animation and sound of the of the Panzer Grenadier Shrek. It really makes a loud whistle as it sails across the battlefield. Barton nicely countering with some uh, anti-infantry guns up close. This pack has moved so far forward. Uh-oh, Barton's being pushed back. This is tough. Oh man, these mines might come into play. Barton trying to flank, but oh, I don't know. You know, this is such a high pressure match. If you make it to a contender bout, you're uh, you're eligible to win that uh, $400 prize just for making it to the semis. And I don't know, Barton might be feeling some pressure, man, because he is, you know, he, it's like he considers pushing in for a flank, but then he just backs away from them. And um, you know he's he's got a strong lead in 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 victory points, but Hans has a very strong army, and and this one is close. Look at Hans; he's going to come in here and try to stop the drain as he pushes towards this cutoff point. Oh man, so much action! I need a bigger screen. Uh, Hans is really good about. Falling his infantry back when there might be a flank coming. He spots these flanks and he falls back to cover them, which is quite nice. He's reinforcing while he's at it. And yeah, Barton's just not been able to get a flank off. He had to fully retreat from the left. 
And let's see, these guys are gonna raise the center BP. So finally, Barton's on the drain for the first time in a long while. And Barton, you know, he's just suffering a lot of manpower hits when he pushes. And he's been uh, struggling to reinforce his squads, but hey, look at this. It's happening somewhere. <laughs> he's building. Where the hell is it? I can't. I can't find it. Okay. Uh, eh? All right, here they come. It's an AT gun. I, I thought it, I was confused. I thought it might be a Howie. Back to the action. I really think that you know Barton needs some some kind of attack. He. He hasn't yet, you know, it's 12 CPs to unlock the strafe. That could really help. Because uh, Pan's units are so clumped up. I mean, maybe a, a mortar or something. He needs some kind of area of effect that he can send in to Hansy's hard points. Granted, Hans would change his playstyle if Bart had something like that. Spread his units a, a little bit more. Oh, wow. What an extended fight. A long front line. Tanks being repaired. He, Barton wants his T-34s in tip-top shape. And, and there we see, okay, so this is interesting. Barton's using the Zis gun sort of as a little mini Howie. He's activated this barrage for 60 munitions to go in and strike that hard point. Um, hands backs away nicely, though. Doesn't suffer too many casualties. That could have been a big surprise hit. But that's that's the first thing that's made hands back up in quite a while. So that uh, I mean, there's something to that, just to sort of get himself some elbow room, some some space to breathe, you know, be able to move his infantry into the center. Uh oh, Barton getting a little far forward with the anti-tank gun, and this is a strafe newly unlocked and executed. This could be very big. Hands has got to move all over the place. You see that the first shot comes in and forces these Grants to retreat. The other Grants are trying to get out of the line of sight, trying to get away from this area of attack. And that Sturmovic is rotating around the battlefield. Let's see if we can get eyes on him. There he is rotating around. He's going to come in for another attack. No, he didn't fire that time. Hans sees this coming and is just really giving the position up. Let's see if he comes in for the attack. Here he comes. The bang, bang, bang. It hit these guys. These dudes are down to one man. They're going to retreat. Hans, doesn't look like Hans has lost the squad yet. These guys are suppressed. Is the, here comes the Sturmovic coming in for another loiter run. No, he doesn't fire on that run. Let's see if he get ready to fire now. There he goes. There's some fighting happening. There's some engagement. Here comes the Sturmovic. Where's it going to go? Trying to follow these planes is quite difficult. I think the strafing run, will it have another round? Yes, it will. Bang, bang. Here it comes. Oh, my goodness. It takes out the pack and takes the Grenadier squad down to two men. Now Barton's got some room for his tanks to push, and he sees it, he's pushing behind. Here comes all the Russian infantry, it's four concert squads, tons of vets, and four T-34s, he's pushing in to crush hands in position. This pack is totally out, and checkmate, he's trying to reset up, he's a lot of time to reset up, my friend, you are dead, and those tanks, those T-34s are gonna push in here, they're gonna kill that command tank. They're after it. One of them gets fouled. He's going to be slowed down a bit. Fucking Martin's infantry punching in. What an attack. He's going to try to take out these retreating units. Look at the T-34's chase. He wants to do as much damage as he can. There's a the friend squad that goes down. What a fantastic attack from Martin. We could smell it coming, and he hit hard, man. That When that strafe, that last run of the strafe, took out the pack and opened the door for these two 34s. And they're rushing in. Let's see them finish off this command tag. There it is. There's the kill. And suddenly, Hans's army has been cleared from the field of Samoski. GG! What a bitchin' attack! What a forceful move! 
decisive moments. That's what we want to see from our Code 2 games. We want to see a player just going for it. Man, that kind of gave me chills. I was loving that. I had a blast casting that. It was an honor to cast that game. Barton with just a fucking haymaker push. Excuse the French. You know, if the units can square, why can't I? Just once in a rare while, let myself go loose. Um, that was just a wham, a knockout. Put hands to the canvas. Evens this thing up one to one. Not just evens it up but takes the lead. Barton took the lead. He had more VPs in that second game. He will have faction choice in game three. So everything's on the line. And I will tell you the little grudge story before we start game three. Stick with us. We got a Company of Heroes 2 game to give away at the end of the show. Um, you know, share. This is, this is hot. Game three, ace game coming up. Share the uh, tweet our stream. Um, give some shouts in the shout box. You know, I got no time to do any of that stuff when I'm a broadcaster. So, you know, throw a post on Facebook, wherever you do it. But share. Get Razor's mom in here to witness this because game three, the decider, is coming up after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> 